The workout is an alternating EMOM, and it's gonna be 10 minutes long, and it is for total load. Minute one, you're gonna do 25 double unders, six bar facing burpees, and one clean. It can be a power clean or a squat clean. Minute two, you're gonna rest and change your own weight. So the way this is gonna flow is you're gonna do your 25 double unders, six bar facing burpees. All you have to do on the burpee is face the bar. You can get over it any way that you want to, two foot or one foot, take off and landing. And then you're gonna do a clean. You choose your weight. If you make that lift, you have to increase weight for the next minute. If you miss, you can stay at the same weight or go down. You have to do a minimum of a five pound increase each time and then your score is gonna be the sum of all five attempts. So if you miss a lift, you get a zero for that minute. And then the tie break is gonna be the heaviest lift out of all five attempts. Training's day take throw down 35. Get off my frame. <laughs> wow, you <laughs> got <laughs> some strength behind you. <laughs> hey, hey, and welcome to The Throwdown. My name is Brandon Dorman. I'm Max Elhaj. I'm Mia Gianelli. If you are new to this series, this is where we announce a qualifier style workout and invite all of you to do it with our training think tank community. We do the workout a week ahead of time so that we can provide you with a demo and some tips to get better at qualifiers. This week we have Cedric demoing the workout. He shared his strategy with us before starting, so let's see what he had to say. Uh, because it's only the total amount of all the lifted counts, I'm just going to do small set, so five pound step every time. I plan on starting at 315, go 320, 25, 30, and I finish with 335, which will give me a bigger number. If you go too high, like 345, 350, I might miss and then my total score is going to be crap. 25 dubs to start. Can you give us a rundown of who Cedric is first, please, Max? I can't. I want me to do that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Cedric is from Canada. He's in town um, to train, and then he's not competing at Waterpooza, right? No, he's competing at Atlas as his next competition. Okay. He has already qualified for the games through the Open, and he is very fit. <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> Opening weight, him and Trav in the background, 315. They were almost hitting feet during their burpees. Yeah, we moved the bars after yeah. this so everyone knows. <laughs> One quick note, you see where he's having to move his rope. One of the things that Travis did a good job of most of the time is getting it out of the way. So just for everybody doing this at home, think about that before so it doesn't get tangled up when you're doing your burpees. Yeah, you have time to reset your rope in the in the break so you can just kind of toss it to the side, get right. out of the way. Successful lift. Yeah. So I think this cool format, like a little bit of lifting time pressure, a little bit of fatigue, a little bit of pressure on your double unders, trying to do it with a high heart rate, do heavy lifting. I think that all plays a role in determining what your strategy is for this. Yeah, I think there's a couple ways that you can look at this. If it's just like a qualifier where you know, hey, I have five days, I can do it multiple times, you may take some risks and go a little bit heavier. To, obviously, this, there's two scores for this workout, so total load is one of those, and you want to get as high as you can on the leaderboard. If it's an in-person competition, right. I know, Mia, you had some thoughts there. on the way that you would strategize that verse Right, just a quick note though, the the far. second score is just the tie break. So your, heavy, yes. yeah, your heaviest load is your tie break, so total load is the score. Right. Um, if this is a game day competition, you need to keep in mind what it would do to you on the leaderboard to miss a lift. So, you know, if you have your target heaviest weight and um, you take 10 pounds off of that, maybe you lose a few spots on the leaderboard versus if you miss that lift, now you're basically last. Especially with these guys that are cleaning 340 at the right. end, yeah. right? Like right. That's a make huge miss. Yeah, there's no, if you miss, you're, you're done. So that's just something strategy-wise, maybe see what you want to get out of this workout. Do you want to, you know, take risks and go for it? Are you practicing for in person? When I did it, I took the conservative approach and worked on composure. Um, and treated it like I was on the competition floor and needed to hit my lifts. I think as a general rule of thumb, right now in the season, people should use these throwdowns as an opportunity to be a little bit more aggressive and take risks. Because you know, like that's how you're gonna kind of extend some of your capacity. You're not gonna get the opportunity to do that in a qualifier unless it's on a retest or something yeah. like that. So if, if I could, I'd encourage people in something like this to, be aggressive and you know try to extend your limits now that being said that doesn't mean you like 
can open at 100% of your 1RM because that's unrealistic if you have mandatory five pound weight jumps at a minimum. So like as a reference point, Cedric started his first lift at 88.7% of his 1RM. So he cleans 355 and he opened at 315 and his plan was to go five pound jumps the whole way, um, which we'll see if he sticks to, sticks to his plan as he goes. Total loading wise, if you know what lift you want to hit for your final lift, um, take only five pounds off of each step that you work backwards so that that's the way you're going to get your, your biggest yeah. total. So there's, there were some people on site who ended up lifting more overall, or excuse me, their heaviest weight was higher, but they didn't uh, win the workout because their jumps were too big. You want to have those smaller jumps so that you're getting as much poundage is that the yeah, way so re that reverse in? engineering the right. workout based on where you want to have your final lift for yeah, sure and you want as tight of a distribution as possible so right. 20 pounds is basically the tightest spread that you could have if you're mm -hmm. going five pound jumps you know you start at zero five ten fifteen and twenty would be your last lift so you can't really afford to have a 20 pound jump a 10 pound jump and then five pound jumps if you want to have your maximum best score so i think you pick something like a 93 to 98% of your one rep max and then subtract five pounds per lift. And that's really how you'd come up with a strategy for getting your best numbers. Max, one of the things that we talked about before we uh, got on air was Travis finishing the double unders well before him. And part of that is, I mean, Travis is just a little bit faster, but um, what, what do you think the difference is between the two jumps? Yeah, so I mean, I think some of it is strategy that Cedric was trying to go a little bit more controlled and just being a little bit slow and more rhythmic. And Travis was trying to get through the interval quick and then get rest time. So Travis getting like 20 seconds of rest and Cedric's getting like 10 to 15 and he's lifting closer to the buzzer. I think Travis is just basically consciously being as fast as he can with his hands and having a tight jump. And if you look at like an actual slow-mo of Cedric in the air versus Travis in the air when they're doing double unders, Travis is way, way, way closer to the ground on every one of his reps. And over the course of just 25 double unders, he's like two seconds ahead on every set. And that's when Cedric, Cedric had a couple misses in here as he was going. But you know, for this workout, two seconds, not really that big of a deal. But on a workout like traditional qualifiers, 25 per round for 20 or 30 rounds, you're talking about an enormous amount of time savings that you can get from just being faster per rep with your double unders. And I think that's something people can practice and watch in this format pretty easily since they're right next to one another. Yeah, and I think it's just really two strategies. Travis was like, I'm gonna go as fast as I can on the double unders, smooth burpees, and then lift as quickly as possible. So yeah. I had time, whereas Cedric was like, I'm gonna wait kind of till the buzzer. You notice most of his lifts were like at 50 seconds. Yeah. And as a side note, as long as you lift the bar before the minute, it's good. Yeah. So you, you have to be starting. You have to be starting the lift, yeah. but even if you're like on the way up out of the squat, it's and still good. a good lift. Yeah. Yeah. So you do have time if you're efficient. I mean, I was like finishing my sets in like 28 to 30 seconds. You know, if I started my lift at 40 seconds and I missed it. I might have a chance to hit a second attempt, but that's a pretty tight time window. I think you're better off thinking about each one of those intervals as you have one pull on the bar yeah. and take it whenever you want. If you want to take it right at the buzzer, go ahead. If you want to take it early or whenever you feel like you are like, I'm ready and I feel like I can hit this, that's when you go. I saw a few people pull a second time, but not really take any worthwhile attempts. Yeah. So I yeah. wouldn't count on that second pull. Yeah. I think the only chance would be if there was like something kind of technically off with your pull. Like it wasn't a, a weight thing. It was just like you got pulled a tiny bit, you know, forward or you didn't get it racked all the way or you tried to power clean it and didn't have it. And then you go into a squat clean on the next one. But still, you're just talking about a very, very, very quick turnaround to hit 90 plus percent of your one rep max after doing the burpees and dubs. Yeah, I think we all agree on that. There's just not enough time unless it is like a yeah. technical miss. Yeah. One of the things I wanted to point out uh, when he's doing his burpees, and, and this is it, probably not very common when it's only six, 
but I've heard a lot of people say when they're trying to either sprint burpees or just go fast for you know sets of 10 or 12, whatever it may be, that they get dizzy. And that's challenging when you're doing, you know, let's say six or eight or 10 fast and then going to squat clean. One of the ways to alleviate that is to turn the opposite direction each time. So he's a left foot leader, which means he's turning left every single time that he does a burpee. An option for you guys and something that you can practice is going left foot and then right foot and then left foot then right foot. Now that takes some practice and it's, I wouldn't do it in a workout without practicing it beforehand because it actually will create more tension. You start thinking about it, but it's definitely worth trying. Yeah, I think also it's worth it for your body's long-term health and balance. For sure. Like people always kick up to handstands with the same leg. You always step up your burpees on the same leg. You don't think about how much of a pattern repetition that is on just one hamstring doing that same, same movement and never on the other side. So I think just for like general long-term health and balance, I think it's good to add in even if you're not gonna use it in a competitive format, just doing it in training every once in a while is good. Yeah, and as just one last note on that, I actually have found that I am much faster when I change the turn each time, especially in the sprint workout. All right, so the final lift, both uh, Cedric and Trav behind him are both at 340. So this is like 95.7, so almost 96% of Cedric's max. A Little bit less for Travis, but I'd say their maxes are probably pretty close at this point in training. Travis, I think Travis might be 345. I think that's what I wrote down for his heaviest load. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, is that how he passed him? Oh, okay. yeah. 345 versus yeah. 340. The bigger jump at yeah. the end. Uh, till the beginning, what I wanted is keeping my heart rate super low the whole time, so I really paced my double under and my burpees. And then my goal is to go, uh, as I said before, like 315, 20, 25, 30, 35. But I saw that Travis put 340 on his bar, so I decided to go for 340, and I got it at the end. I was pretty happy because we've been dealing with a lot of injury in the past, so that was a good number for me for sure, I'm glad. So we wanted to show you the burpee that we were talking about where you're turning opposite directions each time. This just kind of alleviate if you get any dizziness and especially going into the squat clean. So Mia's gonna do her normal burpee. She's gonna do a step up with her right foot, jump right sided, and then now she's gonna step up with her left foot, jump left sided, or you can do a two foot jump. So you notice, again, goes left, and then she'll go right here. You're always facing the same plate. You can think of it that way. So basically, every time you turn, you're facing the same direction. That'll alleviate any dizziness or if you're getting a little fatigue from doing the burpee. All right, we have some scores for you guys. Mike wins the day at 17.25 total over the five lifts, 3.55 heaviest. Tyler was at 17.05 and 3.55. Travis was third at 16.40 and a 3.45 heaviest lift. A reminder that it's total load and then your tie break is your heaviest lift. On the female side, Mia wins it at 9.75 and 2.05. Kylie gets second at 9.55 and 2.10. And Deb was at 8.80 with a 190 heaviest lift. Go beat those scores. We'll see you guys next week. It's a wrap, you know what I'm saying? Your boy Project Pata in this thing, man. Hey, look, man, thank y'all for watching Train Think Tank YouTube channel. Y'all hit that motherfucking subscribe button, you know what I'm saying? So y'all go ahead, man. Thank y'all for watching the channel, you know what I'm saying? Hit that motherfucking subscribe button. Let it be known, let it be known, let it be known, you know what I'm saying? Pata!